All right. Uh, any questions? We, we do have an exam Friday. Open book, open notes. We'll be over, I think, the first three chapters, which takes us... No, first two chapters is all. So we've got the uh, rectilinear motion, curvilinear motion, couple of coordinates. Uh, won't be a big deal. Uh, in any of those, I'm not trying to trick you on any of this stuff. Just see if we got the basics well enough to keep moving. Because uh, we do, we do uh, accumulate a lot of what we're, we're getting here. Uh, have a couple choices of what we can do today. Uh, got another constrained motion problem. Um, I also have some of the problems from a last year's exam. So we can look at any one of those you want. What? Last year's exam? Systems uh, can be used on the very same problem because with the northeast coordinate system, some of the students chose to do x, y, i, j notation. Some others went ahead and put in the normal tangential coordinate system and answered it in that way. And I accepted either one because I didn't make a, a specification of how it should be. That one should look pretty straightforward, is it? I have trouble uh, differentiating between which like coordinates coordinates to use. All right. What? Come on. All right. No. That's that's fine. No. That's okay because that's what I just said. This one was to illustrate that that on some problems, either one either one can use. Uh, it can work. In fact. Uh, even the uh, even the um, uh, polar coordinates would work on this one as well. So in this one, you were given uh, a car traveling in a circular radius path at a certain point. At a speed of 45 miles per hour, 30 degrees north of east. So, didn't actually label it, but I guess I expected the students to come up with that was 30 degrees. And its speed is increasing at a rate of 5 feet per second. If you were to determine the acceleration. And remember, acceleration is a vector, so I needed some representation that would give me a full vector uh, solution for this. I also said uh, I wanted it in feet per second squared.
Okay, that's how you read it. 450 foot radius on that turn. For a car, actually, it's a fairly tight turn. Now, this is one I think would be easier in normal tangential coordinates. Why is that? Because Alex asked that very thing. He said, I'm sometimes confused which coordinate systems I should use. One very good. Remember the normal tangential? It's off a little bit. Uh, we have the normal component that's directed right towards the center and the tangential. Oh wait, we used we used E. Uh, some books use just the N and the T. That's what we used. Do we put like a subscript C plus triple or would you rather see on that, I'd rather have the normal, because it is the normal component. It's not a centripetal component. Uh, okay. I have such an app word. And actually, uh, yeah, now that you bring it up, I think our book uses, they use normal. uses the, yeah, I know they use the normal, but I think they had the normal component. No, they do have it to the inside of the circle. All right. So then the question remains, and to help Alex with this, why would this be easier to do it in normal tangential components for this problem? Right? Kind of the question here? Exactly. Yeah. I still don't see it. Yeah. Jake? Because you already have the tangential acceleration? Uh, we are... We already have the tangential acceleration. In fact, remember this, this acceleration is made up of a piece in each of the two directions. And from the wording, uh, the speed is increasing at five feet per second. That is the tangential acceleration. But not only that, what else is true? Uh, normal acceleration is v squared over r. The normal acceleration is the um, centripetal acceleration, which is why Jake asked, can I call it that? And we know that to be v squared over r. Actually, for this, we call it e squared over rho, but it's the same thing. I certainly wouldn't have counted off for that. Alex Trebek would have put on. Oh, by the way, big night tonight in game shows. Uh, Jeopardy uh, is going to have a computer as one of the contestants, an IBM computer. They've been working, I think, five years. Gone through hundreds of test matches. And now they're, uh, tonight, for three nights, the computer goes up against the two biggest Jeopardy champions ever. And on Cash Cab debuts in Chicago tonight, Cash Cab Chicago, one of the people getting on is a friend of mine from elementary and junior high, and high school. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm famous tonight. Because. And you're on camera right now. And on camera. So, so extra credit for wa watching both and then writing a report. To the computer, Jeopardy's going on three nights. Three nights this week, so that'll be pretty interesting. All right. Uh, so what deals remain? Uh, what V do you use? Since it's accelerated. Yeah, even though the velocity is changing, it's the acceleration, it's the velocity at that instant shown 
gives you the acceleration at that instant shown. So uh, if you choose to just do it in the normal tangential components, I think the hardest thing left is you gotta make sure the 45 miles per hour is in feet per second. That's about the hardest, hardest part of the whole thing. That's what, uh, for normal tangential components, we tend to use for the radius of the, radius of the curvature at that point. That could change as well as could the, the center of the curvature because very few curves are actually truly circular for, for more than a little bit. What? Can we just use R for that? Yeah. You're like, now you've got columns not missing disease. It's spreading. Can I read this for That way you can go back to it if you wish. Is that one of the homework assignments? Oh, you mean like the homework assignments for Friday? No, no, Is that the homework assignments for Friday? Is it the same one? Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm ha happy to do it if you'd like. But. No. Happy to do it if you're stumped. So, again, uh, the homework's due Friday, and so probably sometime Thursday I'll post the solutions. So that should be perfect homework scores this week. But remember, I'm not great for content anyway. I'm great for uh, posting for formatting. See if you do a good job putting them together, and then you check and see if you're doing them right. What, got it? Yeah. All done? I don't see the answer. Oh. Call that an answer? What oh, what on homework you wanna look at rather than these? So, uh, whatever you guys and gal think you need. Are we gonna have, are we gonna have one that like we have to use polar coordinates? No. It there may be one where I would hope you would. Uh, remember the ones that are good for that are the cases where the center point is fixed. And so you have uh, especially some kind of tracking satellite type thing where the information from the satellite would be exactly the things you need for the polar coordinates and it would be just a matter of filling it in. You know, you'd have R, R dot, and R double dot. That's very easy data. In fact, uh, most of you, I think, have used those uh, those TI calculator physics things, CVLs, I think they're called, calculator-based laboratory things. You might have used those in, in high school. We've got a full set of them. We just can't figure out how to use them. <laughs> um, it, it gives exactly that kind of stuff. And then uh, also theta, theta dot, and theta double dot. And once you have any of those, it's a matter of just plugging them into the polar coordinate equations. I, I just know some of the homework are just like really like, like there's a lot of like substituting like the variables and like uh, how to get lost in the polar coordinate. Well, that's okay, because we find you. We track you on radar. Okay. We just take us a while to fill in the equations come get you. So, so take, take your little pup tent. They'll come get you. So. That is a good flag, actually. Yeah, good I've been doing this for enough years. That or teaching? Yes. <laughs> All right. Simple as that. That one's pretty straightforward. No tricks, I don't think. Like I said, the, the hardest thing is just getting that into to V. You've already been given that. Uh, getting V into feet per second. So, uh, just a matter of putting it in, multiplying it, keeping the unit straight.
what uh, students were allowed to do if they wanted to, though I can't imagine why they'd want to, is uh, they were certainly allowed to put it into X and Y coordinates. Certainly allowed to, and it's not wrong if you do so. It's just remember every time you take a step like this, when you go from one place to another place, it's a chance for an error to happen. Uh, making that, making the, the simple conversion, uh, just, just a simple trip problem, but it's easy enough under the pressure test to screw that up. And so if you take something that's correct, as here, and move it to here, but make a mistake, you know, I can't let that ride. You goofed up. Would that just ignore the symmetry? No. Oh, yeah, I had the velocity. In that. Well, no, what, you, what you'd end up getting, I, actually, I guess I drew it on the wrong vector. You have some acceleration like that, and then that one you break into XY components. Some, some students, um, are very tied to x, y coordinates. All right, so that one um, should just have uh, All right, nine point eight, and they're given five. So not all the questions are going to be hard. Oh, uh, was that hard? No what? Okay, I I've written down nine point seven. I thought you said nine point eight. So I was hoping to avoid argument, but it. Okay. Third one, there are actually four because we've covered more material on that one. So. There was the third one. A constrained motion problem. We've been looking at those on Friday. So given that block A is moving to the right, at 5 meters per second with an acceleration of minus 0.2 meters per second squared, determine the velocity and the acceleration of block A. Actually, but 
Remember what I said is advice for a coordinate system? I think I gave you two, two particular pieces of advice for coordinate systems. Keep it fixed. Wherever you put it, don't attach it to one of the moving objects. You can. It just makes things more difficult. And the other thing was... Not between the two objects. Now, this is where the curveball is here. Because we have motion in two directions. thing you need to solve these problems. The, the premise on this whole thing is what? Yeah, the length of the rope. So however you can find that, is fine. share it with Alex and he didn't like it? Actually, I don't want to write anything because if I write anything down that's wrong, I can't erase it. I don't want to well, that's just piece here. Of Wait, you could have put your, your diagram and pen, then your attempts and pencil, and you could have just erased them off and your diagram would still be okay. Figure if 
could do that enough times. Say what? These these three lines? Yeah. Well, no, they're not. They're not, they're not even bigger. Bigger. Well, it doesn't matter because that pulley moves and is and is as it does. The length of that will change. That will change. That will change. objects plus uh, some other stuff that we call constants. That's things like the amount of cord wrapped around a pulley. That's just never going to change. No matter where the object is, that doesn't change. So there are a bunch of little things like that that we just call constants. So it all had to do with where A is and where B is and then all the other stuff that never changes. And then we take the time rate of change of the length of the rope. Now, what should that be? Oh, zero. Zero, because the rope doesn't change length. So now we have this as a function of the velocity of A and B, because they derivate as well. And then what's the time rate of change of constants? Zero. So all that's left is some functional relationship between the velocity of one and the velocity of the other, which is exactly what I asked for. Gave you the velocity of A, asked for the velocity of B. Then you take the derivative again, and you have a function that relates the Accelerations, which again was the last part that I asked. So the the this is really the hardest step because these were very simple uh, derivatives to take.
Well, where'd you put your origin? Uh, the top left. Yeah. Top left. Here? Like where B and A. Like where the intersect sort yeah. of? Yeah. So you, you did something like that? Yeah. Okay. And then, then measured from there. So that would be the distance down to B. Yeah. How do you handle A? Uh, the distance I did next A. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Does that work? Uh, maybe, maybe it would rest more easily with your eye if you even wrote that. Would that change anything? No. Not really. No, not not at all. Because uh, all this motion's in one direction, all that motion's in the other. They're linked, of course. So let's see then how to do the length of the cables in that regard. Um, so we have this piece of cable, yeah. which is YB minus whatever that piece is. I call that constant. That's a constant. All right, so we've got, we've got YB plus Anything that's constant, we'll just dump in there. So that little bit there, above that line, is a constant. We'll just chop it off, dump it over there. We've got the YB minus whatever that is. We dumped it over there. What about this one? The second cable. The easiest way to do, make sure you don't want to skip any parts. What about this cable? It's also YB minus that part, which is a constant, and minus this part, which is a constant. So it's another YB. I don't want to put a 2 in front of there. I don't know how many we get. Now we've got two things dumped over there in constants. What about this cable? It's uh, YB minus that amount minus this little amount. But those two are constants, aren't they, right? Yeah. All right, so that's, that's a third YB plus a third little bit dumped into the constant bucket. There, that helps a little bit. Is that where you're out of trouble? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've taken care of those three. Are you, is everybody comfortable with those three? How about uh, this one? It's XA minus that little bit and minus that little bit. So that's plus XA plus another little thing thrown into the chum bucket. Well, that was this one. Now we have that one. No, no, we have no. We got this one. Okay. So that's XA minus that little bit, minus that little bit, just more constant. Or equal three. YB plus 2XA plus constant. So the deceleration is negative and the cost of curve deceleration is positive. DJ, that makes sense? Tubi, that's what you got up to there? Pat, comfy with that? Yeah.
and then you take the time derivative of that. So you get 3y dot b, the velocity of b. Well, we're asked to find that. Plus 2x dot a, which we are given. And that's 0, because everything else is a constant. Both the length is a constant, and of course the constants are constant, so they all derivate to zero. So y dot b, which we were asked to find, is what? Minus two thirds x dot a. Whatever x dot a is, don't even care. But we are given that. Um, so minus 10 thirds, what's that, 3.3? What's the minus mean? Did you draw so like positive b was down? Well, there. Yeah. Yeah. So this means that y dot b is decreasing with time, which means it's going up as it would you expect if a was going to the right. So if x dot a is positive, y dot b is negative, and vice versa. If a is getting bigger, b is getting smaller and vice versa. So you have to look at the minus sign in terms of what's happening to the coordinate we set up. We could have done y b down as negative, I guess, but there's, it's just a distance. So there's the best left positive, I guess. And then we can just take the second derivative of that equation straight off. Yeah, does that, that uh, sit well? Colin, you okay with that one? Want me to give you another one of those? Sure. Okay, here we got that. Just trying to clean the board. All right. So. And here's a, a one with a little bit more practical application to it.
radius of the winch, 4.2 centimeters. And the angular velocity of the winch is 47.6 radians per second. Uh, I should have given it an RPM. Find the velocity of C. Alright, what was 
everybody's got a good start. Pretty much everybody has some measure like that. Maybe use an X, maybe use a Y. Doesn't matter. So the length of the rope. In those terms, something's wrong. Because if you've got 3YC and you take the time to rid of that, well, that's what somebody else had. I've got the same one. Yeah, so that's, that's not it. That's not going to work. Unless, well, if we turn the system off and go home early, I guess that handles it. Somehow you've got to get this in there, the fact that the table's moving. Can you do uh, just a two pi r times the velocity? So in this case, the change in length, there is a change in length? Uh, no, no. No, oh, non-stretchable cable. I bought it from Ace. Somewhere. Got it from Earl at Ace. Oh, it's pretty right. dumb to buy a stretchy, stretchy cable. <coughs> Though, I imagine in especially large crane design, they have to take that into account. Luckily, we're not there yet. Answer. Answer. No. Is it like? Huh? Maybe I will just 
just save this for Friday. Wrong negative sign, which is give us a hint. What do you do? It's all up there. Gave you that hint. Copy that off my paper. <laughs> that was a good hint. Well, let's see. Let's see. Maybe, maybe we can. Uh, we got to get the fact this is turning in there somehow, right? What if, what if we just you know, had a little little mark on there? Maybe called it A. You didn't like A? Yeah, no, no. I don't know why I didn't think that. <laughs> <laughs> because it's the speed with which that rope is moving up that determines the speed of the whole rest of the system. This system, you could take out this winch, run this up to something else, and it wouldn't be any different than any problem we've already done. So if you do that, then we can get that into the problem then. Because you know the speed A is moving at point A. It's just the speed of the winch. So, if we don't worry about the winch, just worry about point A, it's at YA, and then Minus, well, there's some constants or something up there we're not really concerned with. Actually, that's not the way we want to do that. We want to do that whole length of this cable, I guess. Yeah. Right? So its length is... YC minus, oh, we have to worry about all those things. How are we going to manage this? Huh? A couple things we're not worried about. That That's a constant, that's a constant, so that's not a big deal. That's a constant. But there's another dot there called B. Where? Here? Make that length C. This length C? Yeah. Uh, well, that's a little confusing. Length B. Make this length B, but that's changing. Let's do this. Let's start from the other side. So the length of this is YC, YC plus a bunch of constants. Because that's a constant, that's a constant, and the amount around each pulley is a constant. How about this length? Well, why only if it's perfectly level with that? Plus, as this is going up, that's going to go down. You think? I cannot even be sure. Uh, isn't, isn't, aren't these two lengths, what if we took those together? 
can we assume that? All we care about is we keep take track of the entire cable length. So these two together is YC minus this amount, minus that amount, and minus that amount, which are all constants. So plus YC plus some more constants. Oh, sorry. I want you guys to get upset. Why is it that you can't do them individually? Uh, you could, I guess, you just want but, more YCs? but you'd have to, you no, you just need to locate some other things. You need to locate this. I, I would guess you'd have to locate that fully. Yeah. And then, well, that one's a fixed distance away from that one, so that wouldn't be a concern. So. Um, but it would come out algebraically to be the same thing. What else then? Then this part. Which is YC minus YA up to the point where we know it's moving. Uh, plus a bunch of constants. It's YC minus YA, which isn't constant, minus that, which is. Cable, the, these two cables taken together. That total distance is YC, top to bottom, minus this amount, which is constant, so we're not worried about it, minus this amount here, it's YC minus that amount. It's as if we now took this off. And we just have now YC minus YA, which is the point, the, the length to this point, because we know that velocity from the speed of the winch. So that's YC minus YA minus a bunch of other constants. We don't care about. We don't even care if they're minus, or plus, or minus. There's a bunch of constants in there. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I got those. This one is all YC. You know that, right? Yeah. And uh, this one is YC plus this constant. But we don't care about that. We'll figure that out. We're going to call it YC. And then we're doing the same thing here. This is all YC, so but we want that, so that would be this, this is a constant, that doesn't matter, and we already know that that's YA, we already know that the range that's in the YA, so it's, this is the YC minus the YA, and, and minus a constant, the constant's gone. This is just YA, that's why we have a lot of YC. That sit with you, Pat? Oh, yeah. I think I'll fall on this so far. That's did he help Alex? Was that a good explanation? I'm just, I'm just too lost. All right, so, here. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe there's just a different way we can we can draw this. So let's let me try this. I don't know if this will work. Let's try if this will work. So here's a length of cable that's YC long. 
right? Top to bottom, that's all. If, if I had a piece of cable like that, it would reach down to C from the top. Now I'm going to take out of it that amount, which is no trouble because that's a constant. I think I just got it. And then I'll take out this amount, but that's YA. So I have YC minus a constant minus YA. So YC minus YA plus some stuff in the constant. I got it. I didn't realize for some reason that we're just the, this, the second pulley was also moving upwards. What? This pulley? It. Yeah. These two? Isn't that what's causing this? Uh... Yeah. Well, if, if, if cable A is going up, point A on the cable is going up, then that pulley is going to go up as well. There's cable going in there. And then L dot. And there's the speed of A. And the length of the cable doesn't change, so that's all zero. Before, we just had YC up there, or 3YC for uh, L. Why when we took the time derivative, it was at zero? Oh, when you Four. when you originally had L equals three YC. Yeah, why did it go to zero? Because the length of the cable is constant, supposedly. And that's what this is supposed to represent. Plus constants. Yeah. So if you take the time derivative of it, that's zero. But the time rate of change of the length of the cable is also zero. Okay. That's that's that doesn't mathematically fall from here. It's a restriction we have on the problem that this is a non-stretching cable. The, the, the length of the cable itself is a constant. So if you set that to zero, then you don't have anything left. There's there's no way the velocity of the Fully, the, the winch, sorry, was in there. Yeah? I mean, when I first looked at that problem, like, I automatically just set it up like this. Like, mm -hmm. why is that? Because it seems like the winch. All right. Here's what, uh, here's what Jake had, and he asked the question, why is this wrong? This is how he set it up originally. Where'd you put it to? Okay, he had, he had, uh, call that W, Yeah. call that distance W, and then that distance C. Is that right? Yeah. And then you said, what, the length of the cable then is W, plus C for this first piece? I did it like a track, kind of. You did it like a what? Like a track, like, like I started like at the winch and followed it down and it came down. Like, I moved like over an inch or something, I would go here and then like that. I took the length like that. Can I do that? Uh, oh, I see. So, so you said, that this is one, two, three W. Right. All right. Plus one, two, three C. Yeah. Minus a couple constants. Plus uh, put a K for constants because you have a C in there. And then L dot equals three W dot. Plus three make sense. C dot equals zero. Yeah. It does make sense because the boys aren't doing anything, but I just, I mean, I don't know. I just 
Anybody see trouble? It's it's doable, but there's a, a big, huge, extra layer of complication in here. We just end up having too many variables to do with software, right? I think it's great. Just don't know what w dot or c dot is. You don't know what w or c dot is, so you can't. We need c dot. Well, actually, what you need is w plus c dot plus uh, this point right here to which he's measuring c is moving. This point right here is moving. So he's essentially put his origin on a moving object, this pulley, and between the two objects doing the moving. So, so he was able to violate both of my my recommendations on where to put the origin. I didn't know I was doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you'd have to, it's, it's all screwed up by the fact that that point there is moving. Now, if you can figure out how fast it's moving, then you can account for that in these different images. But I wouldn't even want to touch that one. So now you've hopefully had the velocity of A and just put that in there. Uh, back here. Uh, Wait, what is the velocity of A? Yeah. Velocity of A was R omega, which I think was 2 meters per second. All right. Do you want another one? No? Yeah? Just because you like drawing them? <laughs> you know, you could bring in colored pencils yourself. I remember when I started doing the first professor I had who used colored pencils. I said, boy, that works great. Took me about half a semester to start taking my notes that same way. All right, so here's a cantilever beam, part of a crane or something, maybe an overhead uh, crane. There's a pulley there. A fixed pulley here. A non-fixed pulley below it, and that's where our load hangs. I'll put the cable in in a second. This pulley here can move, can slide, so I'll put some little rollers on it because it's attached to a piston that pulls it in and out. got that before I put the cable in because you have to pay attention to what the cable does. All right, so the cable goes like this. Around those two pulleys. To then uh, some kind of fixed support there. And you have to account for the fact that there's slack in the line. So when you turn it on, you got to take all that up too. All right. So, uh, you're to find how 
how far the piston actuator must move to raise the load two feet.
collecting it today for, <laughs> for midterm grades. Good thing I did. Midterm <laughs> grades? Set up your measurements in terms of uh, what's moving and from something that's fixed. So for example, uh, we could do that and we'd know where F is because that point E isn't moving. And we could do, say, that for how that uh, pulley's moving, which will be the same as the actuator arm. So I should have left it under. So the length of the cable, let's see, XC. Plus XC plus some constants plus well this, this piece here and that piece there are constant. So then we have 2YF. Can I go back? Can, can I see what you did with that? that you said there's constant which one? The, you're okay with this, yeah. these two cables? Yep. And then go to the next one, there's this cable. Okay. Well, that's a constant. Because okay. this isn't moving. That end isn't moving. And this is a constant. Okay. So all we're left over with is just the two vertical parts here. Which oh. is 2YF. So for F to, for the load F to go up two feet, the actual end of the actuator arm C has got to go which way? If YF decreases, XC increases because these two are all, all together accounts. So if YF is decreasing, XC is increasing. It's got to go that way. Which would certainly make sense because if you take more cable up at the top, you're going to have less down here. So that system can really do anything for like mechanical advantages? No, other than whatever it was doing in this direction is now doing in this direction, which itself may be an advantage. Okay. You know, maybe you need to get your mother-in-law out of a crevasse. <laughs> Sorry, Nana, just kidding. 